So in this video, I'd like to go over how to compare a linear function versus an exponential function over time. And the problem that we're given tells us that Dane and Dave are businessmen who decided to invest money by buying land in the Pacific Northwest. They started their investment at the same time and each month they buy more land. Dane bought 12 acres of land in the first month and each month afterwards bought four acres. Dave bought five acres of land in the first month and each month afterward his total of number of acres increases by a factor of 1.5. The question is asking in which month will Dave's land exceed Dane's? So I think what it, when interpreting word problems like this, it's a good idea to create a table to help organize the set of set of numbers that we have. So let's create a table here for Danes. Uh, the independent variable dealing with is months. That looks like it's the thing that's changing every time. So we'll label that as M. And we're going to change uh, Dane, Danes up to uh, J of M. And we'll create a table for for Dave's as well. We'll leave him as D of M. Now, based on the information we know about uh, Dane is that in the first month, so in, in month one, Dane bought 12 acres. And each month afterwards bought four more. So in his second month, he now uh, ha he bought four, so he's up to 16. In the third month, he's up to 20. Fourth, 24. Fifth, 28. 6, 32, and in the seventh month, he's up to 36, 36 acres of land. Now, Dave, on the other hand, is he's got him changing at a different rate. It tells us that in, in his first month, he had five acres of land. But each month after that, his total number of acres is increasing by a factor of 1.5. Well, what does it mean by factor of 1.5? Well, when we use the word factor, we're talking about multiplication. So we need to multiply Dave's by by 1.5. And one, 5 times 1.5 is 7.5. So in his second month now, he's up to 7.5 acres. And initially, if we're comparing them, Dave has less acres by 7 than Dane. And then he's still considerably less in the second month. But let's see how this gap starts changing as we increase the months. So in the third month, uh, 7.5 times 1.5, let's calculate this, it's 11.25. Uh, and in the fourth month, the factor of 1.5 would bring that one to 16.875. In the fifth month, we're at 25.875. 31. I'm going to round that one for now. I'm going to multiply on the calculator. And then in the sixth month, we're up to 37.96. In the seventh month, we're up to 56.95. Now, as time went on, as the months went on, Dave's rate, although he's multiplying by 1.5, he was multiplying a larger number each time by 1.5. Now, when it's multiplying by a factor of 1.5, it's it's multiplying by 1 and then a half of itself. Now, half of a larger number is going to continue to make that number larger. And when it's asking us in which month will Dave's land exceed Dane's, if we're looking at this, in month 3, he's still less. In month 4, he's still less. In month 5, he's closing the gap significantly. He's got 28 and he's got 25. But by month 6 here... Uh, Dane has 32 acres of land, and Dave has 30, little over, almost 38 acres of land. So it, it, we've answered the problem. By month six, Dave's land will exceed Dane's. Now, when comparing these two functions and determining which one's the linear function and which one's the exponential function, we were looking out for something called the, the common difference and a common ratio. Because Dane's increased by plus four every time, he has a common difference. And one of the ways that we can determine that is by taking one of these values and subtracting it by the prior value. So if we do 28 minus 24, we get four. If we do this another time between 20 and 16, we get four again. Since we're doing subtraction, we have a common difference of four. 
If we look at the change in days, however, it's not increasing by the same amount. From 5 to 7.5 was an increase of 2.5. And let's just jump down a little bit further ahead. From 37 to 56 is, it's, it's much larger than 2.5. It's maybe around 19 or so. But if we're looking at this, it doesn't have a common difference. But what it does have is a common ratio. And the way that we find this is by taking one of these terms, like the last one, but because we dealt with a factor, a multiplication, we have to do the opposite. We have to divide. If we do 16.875 divided by the prior term, 11.25, you end up getting 1.5. It might not have been as clear as maybe if we do um, 7.5 and 5. If we divide one of these numbers by the prior value, we end up getting 1.5. So although the difference wasn't the same, we created a division here, which is considered a ratio, and we have a common ratio. So when looking at these two examples here, we have this function, which because it's got a multiplicative relationship, it's an exponential function. Where, because this one over here has an additive relationship, it's gonna be considered a linear function. So when solving these type of word problems, I would strongly recommend creating a table to help observe the changes in each of the functions, and then you can better observe how the numbers will play out and which one ends up being the exponential or the linear function, so that hopefully that it'll help you solve the problem that you're looking to solve. Good luck.